Cash Flow, God's Financial Rules to Increase Your Wealth Written and published by God Daily News Introduction Just as Moses led the Israelites to the promised land flowing with milk and honey, let's navigate the wilderness of financial insecurity and move towards a land of abundance. This journey taps into biblical wisdom to enhance your financial success, linking faith and finance in a harmonious relationship. You're about to discover how God's Word can increase your cash flow, guiding you towards stewardship, generous giving, and trust in divine provision. Continue on, there's much to explore and apply in our daily lives. Before we begin, I'd like to appeal to those who still need to subscribe to the channel. Please subscribe, like, and share the video. God bless you as you do this. Also, Check the video description for more information and resources. Thanks. Chapter 1 Laying a Solid Financial Foundation Before you can build wealth, you must first lay a solid financial foundation rooted in wise decisions and faith-based principles. This means understanding the fundamental tenets of money management from a biblical perspective. You're not just learning to balance a checkbook, you're building a financial lifestyle based on faith and sound fiscal practice. The first step is to establish a balanced budget. It's not just about cutting expenses or increasing income, but about finding a harmonious balance between the two. Proverbs 27 verse 23 advises, Be sure you know the condition of your flocks, give careful attention to your herds. In modern terms, that's keeping a keen eye on your finances. Next you've got to eliminate unnecessary debt. Proverbs 22 verse 7 warns, the rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. You're aiming for a debt-free life, where you're not enslaved to monthly payments and interest rates. Then, establish an emergency fund. Life's unexpected disturbances shouldn't shake your financial stability. Proverbs 21 verse 20 counsels, In the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has. That's advocating the wisdom of having savings set aside. Lastly, invest wisely. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 2 encourages, Divide your investments among many places, for you don't know what risks might lie ahead. Diversification reduces risk and can increase potential returns. When you've laid this foundation, you're ready for the next steps. Remember, you're not just managing money, you're stewarding God's resources. That's a responsibility and a privilege. Chapter 2 Cultivating a Mindset of Godly Stewardship Now, let's focus on cultivating a mindset of godly stewardship, an essential step in achieving financial success. This innovative approach to wealth management is deeply rooted in the Bible, where God calls us to be good stewards of what He's provided. Recognize first that everything you have, including your finances, is a gift from God. The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, Psalm 24 verse 1. With this perspective, you'll see your resources as something to manage, not possess. This attitude shift is fundamental to your financial success journey. Next, embrace the principle of faithfulness. The parable of the talents in Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30 underscores this. God expects us to use what He's given us wisely and prudently, not squandering it carelessly. He rewards faithfulness in little things with greater responsibilities. So, as you're faithful in managing your finances, expect to see growth and increase. Also, Understand that godly stewardship involves generosity. Proverbs 11 verses 24 to 25 tells us that those who give freely grow richer. As you learn to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, but cheerfully, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7, you'll experience an overflow of blessings. Chapter 3 Budgeting for Intentional Spending your journey towards financial success must include the essential step of budgeting for intentional spending, a practice that prompts you to use God's provision wisely and purposefully. When you design a budget, what you're really doing is making a vital decision about how to allocate the resources God has given you in a way that honors Him and aligns with your personal and spiritual goals. 
Intentional spending isn't about deprivation, rather, it's about making choices that reflect your values and priorities. You're not just trying to cut back on expenses, but directing your money towards what truly matters to you. This could be supporting your church's missions, investing in your children's education, or contributing to charitable causes that resonate with your faith. To get started, examine your current spending habits. Identify areas where you're spending money without realizing it, or where your spending doesn't reflect your values. Next, allocate your resources purposefully, setting aside money for giving, saving, and spending. Remember, Proverbs 27 verse 23 urges us to be sure you know the condition of your flocks, give careful attention to your herds. This means acknowledging every dollar you have as a provision from God, and using it with care and intention. Budgeting for intentional spending invites creativity, innovation, and faith into your financial life. It's not just about making ends meet, but about fostering a spirit of generosity, wisdom, and intentionality with your money. This is a vital step in your journey to financial success, helping you become a faithful steward of God's provision. Chapter 4 Avoiding Debt and Managing Finances Wisely Stepping away from the pitfalls of debt and mastering the art of wise financial management is another crucial milestone on your journey towards financial success. When you're in debt, you're essentially paying for your past, which hampers your ability to invest in your future. Proverbs 22 verse 7 reminds us, the rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. Make a plan to pay off current debt in order to escape this bondage. List your bills in order of least to greatest, then prioritize paying off the smallest first and only making the bare minimum payments on the remaining ones. This approach, known as the debt snowball method, can provide quick wins, boosting your motivation to continue. Implementing wise financial management means making strategic decisions that align with your long-term goals and God's purpose for your life. The Bible advises us to be diligent in our planning and prudent in our spending. Proverbs 21 verse 5 says, The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. You can exemplify these values by creating a realistic budget, building an emergency fund, and investing wisely. Be innovative in your approach to saving and investing. Consider modern resources like investment apps or online finance courses to enhance your knowledge. Chapter 5 Tithing in the Principle of Giving While working towards financial freedom, it's important to remember the biblical principle of tithing and giving, not only as an act of worship to God but also as an investment in your financial future. This principle, deeply rooted in faith, provides a foundation for sound financial stewardship. In the book of Malachi, God challenges you to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse and see if he'll not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing there won't be enough room to store it, Malachi 3 verse 10. This promise implies that your act of giving invites divine provision and abundance. However, how does this function? To get started, you should place a tithe of at least 10% of your income aside. Treat it as an essential part of your budget. This systematic and disciplined approach not only honors God but also teaches you to live within your means. Moreover, understand that tithing is more than a duty, it's a joyful expression of gratitude. The Apostle Paul advises, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7. Chapter 6. Investing with Wisdom and Discernment. In the pursuit of financial prosperity, it's crucial that you invest with both wisdom and discernment, recognizing that every decision you make can greatly impact your financial future. This faith-based financial approach isn't just about crunching numbers or understanding market trends, it's about aligning your financial choices with God's wisdom. The Bible imparts invaluable wisdom on the topic of investing. Proverbs 21 verse 5 says, The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who's hasty comes only to poverty. Essentially, this passage is advising you to be careful, thoughtful, and diligent in your investment decisions. It takes more than merely following the newest trend or trying to make the most money quickly. 
As an alternative, you must be patient, thorough in your research, and wise in your choices. Meanwhile, discernment, a gift from God, is an indispensable tool for investing. It's about understanding the times, making sound judgment calls, and differentiating between good and bad deals. Just as 1 Kings 3 verse 9 states, So give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people to discern between good and evil, pray for the wisdom to discern, to guide your financial decisions. Innovative financial strategies are crucial, but remember, the source of true wisdom and discernment comes from God. Intersecting your faith with your finances doesn't mean ignoring modern investment strategies, rather, it means filtering these strategies through the lens of biblical truth. Chapter 7. Discovering Hidden Income Streams You're likely sitting on potential income streams that have remained concealed, waiting to be discovered and utilized to bolster your financial prosperity. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 8 verse 12, I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence, I possess knowledge and discretion. Applying this wisdom, you can reveal these hidden treasures. Begin your quest by evaluating your talents and skills. Are you a gifted writer, artist, or craftsperson? You could be sitting on a gold mine. Consider monetizing your talents through freelance work, creating online courses, or selling products. Remember, God has given each of us unique gifts, and He wants us to use them for His glory and our wealth building. 1 Peter 4 verse 10 Look at your possessions too. Do you have items sitting around that could be sold online? Or a spare room that could be rented out? These are income streams waiting to be tapped. God has blessed us with abundance, let's not let it go to waste, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. Finally, review your financial assets. Could they be working harder for you? Perhaps there are better investment strategies or higher interest savings accounts available. God encourages good stewardship, and making your assets work for you is part of that, Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30. Revealing these hidden income streams won't happen overnight. It requires prayer, patience, and persistence. But as you walk this path, remember Proverbs 14 verse 23, In all toil there's profit. God wants you to prosper, and He'll guide you as you discover these hidden treasures. Chapter 8 Overcoming Financial Fears and Anxieties Through the valleys and over the mountains of your financial journey, Fears and anxieties might try to shake your faith, but remember, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. It's your faith in Him that will help you conquer these financial fears. The Bible encourages us to cast all our anxieties on Him, because He cares for us, 1 Peter 5 verse 7. You're not alone in this journey, He's there with you. Financial fear can manifest in various ways, such as the fear of lack, fear of making wrong investment decisions, or even fear of success. It's essential to identify the root of your fear and confront it with God's Word. For instance, if you're afraid of lack, remember Philippians 4 verse 19 that God will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Next, you'll need to replace your fear with faith. Instead of worrying about what might go wrong, envision what could go right. Meditate on scriptures like Deuteronomy 8 verse 18, reminding you that it's God who gives you power to get wealth. Chapter 9. Aligning Your Finances with God's Purpose Having conquered your financial fears with faith, it's now time to align your finances with God's purpose for your life. This calls for a shift in perspective, a move from seeing money purely as a means to satisfy personal desires, to viewing it as a tool to advance God's kingdom. Begin by understanding that God is the ultimate source of all wealth. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 reminds us, it's God who gives you the power to get wealth. He entrusts you with resources, not merely for personal gain, but to serve a higher purpose. Next, identify how you can use your finances in sync with God's plan. This may involve investing in your local church or faith-based organizations, assisting those in need, or funding projects that align with Christian values. 
God doesn't just desire for you to be financially successful, but to use that success to bless others. Pray for wisdom and discernment to manage your finances in a way that glorifies God. James 1 verse 5 encourages us to ask God for wisdom, promising that He'll give it generously. As you seek His guidance, you'll find innovative ways to couple your financial prowess with your faith. Lastly, practice financial stewardship. This means being accountable, responsible, and transparent with how you manage your resources. Proverbs 27 verse 23 advises, Be diligent to know the state of your flocks, and attend to your herds. Aligning your finances with God's purpose isn't just about following biblical principles, it's about using your financial success to reflect God's love to the world. Chapter 10 Building Generational Wealth and Legacy Now, let's explore the process of building generational wealth and legacy, an important step in your journey to financial success that allows you to establish a lasting impact for future generations. This isn't just about amassing wealth, but creating a legacy that serves God's purpose. Proverbs 13 verse 22 tells us, A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. You're not just working for your immediate needs, but for the future of your lineage. The first step is to cultivate a mindset of abundance. Believe that God wants you to prosper, just as 3 John 1 verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Next, invest wisely. Consider creating multiple income streams, not just relying on a single source. Look into real estate, stocks, bonds, or starting your own business. Remember, Proverbs 31 verse 16 advises, she considers a field and buys it, out of her earnings she plants a vineyard. Moreover, instilling financial wisdom in your children and descendants is crucial. Teach them about savings, investments, and tithing, so they'll continue your legacy. Deuteronomy 6 verses 6 to 7 emphasizes this, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Lastly, always give. Generosity is a conduit for blessing. Proverbs 11 verse 25 reminds us, A generous person will prosper, whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Building generational wealth and legacy isn't a sprint but a marathon. Stride with faith and wisdom, and you'll see God's prosperity unfold in your life and the lives of your descendants. Chapter 11 Mastering Debt Elimination Strategies Shifting gears, let's look at debt reduction tactics, which are an important part of your financial journey that can liberate you from the shackles of financial stress and prepare the way for the wealthy life God has planned for you. Our Heavenly Father doesn't want us to be enslaved by debt, but rather to live in abundance and freedom. Proverbs 22 verse 7 reminds us that, the rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. To break free from this bondage, you've got to start by facing your debt head-on. Review your debts, scrutinize your spending habits, and identify areas where you can cut back. It's not an easy task, but it's a necessary one. Remember, whatever you measure, you can manage, a principle found even in Luke 14 verse 28, where Jesus advises to first sit down and estimate the cost before building a tower. Next, construct a feasible payment plan. Prioritize your debts, starting with the ones with the highest interest rates. This snowball method can be a game changer in your debt elimination journey. Lastly, stay prayerful and faithful. Trust in God's provision and His promise in Philippians 4 verse 19 that He'll meet all your needs. Make the most of the resources He's entrusted you with, as we learn in the parable of the talents in Matthew 25. Mastering your debt elimination strategies isn't just about financial freedom, it's about walking in the divine abundance God has for you. Be brave, be innovative, and let His wisdom guide your steps. Chapter 12 Developing a Generous Spirit Embracing a generous spirit, you'll find, is a key step in your journey towards financial success, as it aligns with God's teachings and opens up avenues for blessings to flow. This isn't simply about giving away money or possessions, 
It's about adopting a mindset that values sharing, kindness, and compassion. It's about seeing your wealth, not as something to hoard, but as a tool to help others and glorify God. The Bible teaches us, in Proverbs 11 verse 24, one person gives freely, yet gains even more, another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. This concept, often referred to as the law of sowing and reaping, posits that what we give, in love and generosity, will return to us in greater measure. It's an innovative perspective on wealth that goes beyond traditional financial advice. To develop a generous spirit, start by recognizing that everything you have is a blessing from God. This mindset shift allows you to view your resources from a perspective of gratitude and abundance, rather than scarcity. Next, develop the habit of giving on a regular basis. This does not have to be a spectacular gesture, simple acts of kindness can have a significant impact. Remember that it is the heart behind the giving that matters. Lastly, trust in God's promise of provision. As you give, believe that He'll meet your needs and multiply your resources. This faith-driven approach to generosity can revolutionize your financial journey, paving the way for a life of abundance and blessings. Developing a generous spirit isn't just about improving your financial situation, it's about aligning your resources with God's purposes and experiencing the joy that comes from giving. Chapter 13 Achieving Financial Stability and Security Often, achieving financial stability and security doesn't just happen overnight, it's a result of consistent, diligent effort, and faith in God's guidance and provision. You're not alone in this journey, God is your partner, guiding you step by step in this quest for financial security. He's there to provide you with wisdom, to help you make sound financial decisions, and to bless the work of your hands. Your financial stability isn't solely a reflection of your income, it's about your spending habits, savings, and investments too. You've got to create a budget that aligns with your income and stick to it. It's okay to start small, what's important is to start. Prioritize saving and investing over excessive spending. It's a vital aspect of achieving financial security. Remember, God values wise stewardship. Proverbs 27 verses 23 to 24 reminds us to be sure you know the condition of your flocks, give careful attention to your herds, for riches don't endure forever, and a crown isn't secure for all generations. This is a call to understand and manage your resources wisely. Furthermore, it is critical to continually educate oneself on financial topics. Don't be hesitant to consult with financial professionals or take classes to improve your financial literacy. In today's fast-paced world, innovation is essential, and the financial sector is no exception. Keep in mind that with God's guidance, diligent effort, wise decisions, and a commitment to learning, you're well on your way to achieving financial stability and security. Chapter 14 Understanding Biblical Principles of Prosperity To fully understand the biblical principles of prosperity, it's vital to explore the scriptures and comprehend God's perspective on wealth and abundance. God doesn't view wealth as evil, but the love of money can lead to destruction. In 1 Timothy 6 verse 10, it states, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It's not the wealth itself, but the obsession with it that can lead you astray. You're encouraged to be a good steward of your resources. In the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30, the servants who wisely managed their assets were rewarded. This is a clear demonstration that God values prudence and responsibility in handling what's entrusted to you. In Proverbs 3 verses 9 to 10, you're instructed to honor God with your wealth. This principle emphasizes generosity and acknowledges that everything you have comes from God. It's a call to use your wealth to bless others and advance God's kingdom. Finally, remember that true prosperity goes beyond material wealth. In 3 John 1 verse 2, the Apostle John writes, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. This holistic view of prosperity includes spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being. Understanding these principles is the key to aligning your financial goals with your faith. 
It's not just about increasing your income, but about using your resources wisely, generously, and in accordance with God's will. Embrace these principles, and you'll start witnessing the transformative power of biblical prosperity in your life. Chapter 15 Maximizing Your Income Earning Potential While understanding biblical principles is essential, it's equally important to actively explore ways to maximize your income earning potential as part of your journey to financial success. The Bible states in Ecclesiastes 11 verse 6, Plant your seed in the morning and keep busy all afternoon, for you don't know if profit will come from one activity or another, or maybe both. This scripture encourages you to diversify your income sources and optimize your earning potential. You can achieve this by enhancing your skills or learning new ones, which can increase your value in the marketplace. Additionally, you could consider starting a side business or investing in income-generating assets like stocks, real estate, or mutual funds. Remember, Proverbs 14 verse 23 tells us, All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. So, don't just plan, take action. However, don't let the pursuit of wealth become your idol. Philippians 4 verse 13 reminds us, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This means that while you endeavor for financial success, you should also seek spiritual growth and trust in God's plan for your life. Lastly, don't be afraid to ask for a raise or charge what you're worth for your services. The parable of the workers in the vineyard in Matthew 20 verses 1 to 16 teaches us that it's God's will for us to receive fair compensation for our labor. Maximizing your income earning potential isn't just about making more money, it's about stewarding well the resources God has entrusted to you. Chapter 16 Embracing a Kingdom Mindset As you journey towards financial success, it's essential that you embrace a kingdom mindset, understanding that God's principles should guide your financial decisions and actions. This mindset isn't about amassing wealth for personal gain. Instead, it's about stewarding resources wisely, with the understanding that everything you have is a gift from God. It's about aligning your financial goals with God's plan and purpose for your life, seeking His wisdom in every financial decision you make. Embracing a kingdom mindset requires a shift in perspective. It's about seeing every financial decision, every income earning opportunity, as a chance to further God's kingdom. It's about leveraging your resources to impact others positively, to serve, to give, and to bless. You're called to be a conduit, not a reservoir. Wealth isn't the end goal, but a tool to be used for greater purposes. In the Bible, the parable of the talents, Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30, beautifully illustrates this concept. Here, the master rewards the servants who invested and multiplied their talents, praising them for their good stewardship. This is a clear indication that God encourages us to grow our resources, but with the intent of advancing His kingdom and serving others. Chapter 17 Overcoming Temptations of Materialism In your journey towards financial success, you might find yourself grappling with the temptations of materialism, a challenge that can steer you away from your faith-based financial goals. The lure of the latest gadgets, designer clothes, or flashy cars can sometimes feel overwhelming. But remember, this isn't an indication of genuine wealth or success. In fact, it's often a distraction from what truly matters. The Bible warns against the dangers of materialism. In 1 Timothy 6 verses 9 to 10, it reads, those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. This verse underscores the potential pitfalls of materialism, serving as a reminder to keep your priorities in check. Rather than succumbing to materialistic desires, cultivate a spirit of contentment. Hebrews 13 verse 5 advises, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. By doing so, you're not only adhering to your faith but also making smart financial decisions that will benefit you in the long run. Overcoming materialism isn't about denying yourself pleasures, but about aligning your financial goals with your spiritual values. 
It involves innovative thinking, like finding ways to enjoy life's luxuries without going into debt or compromising your financial security. Chapter 18 Prioritizing Savings and Emergency Funds Having successfully avoided the pitfalls of materialism, it's time you focus on the bedrock of financial security, building up your savings and establishing an emergency fund. This isn't just good financial sense, it's a practice deeply rooted in biblical wisdom. Proverbs 21 verse 20 states, In the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has. Essentially, this verse encourages us to save and prepare for the future. To begin with, allocate a portion of your earnings into savings. Savings should ideally account for at least 10% of your income. Though it may seem difficult, keep in mind that God values constancy and faithfulness. You'll soon see that these modest contributions are building up to a significant sum. Create an emergency fund next. This serves as a safety net for unforeseen costs like sudden medical problems or income loss. Your emergency fund should be enough to pay for three to six months' worth of living expenditures. This provides you with a safety net, guaranteeing that you won't be left high and dry in an emergency. As you build your savings and emergency fund, rely on God's guidance. Philippians 4 verse 19 assures us that, God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. With faith, discipline, and wisdom, you can successfully prioritize savings and create an emergency fund, fortifying your financial stability. Chapter 19 Navigating Major Financial Decisions When you're faced with significant financial decisions, it's important to seek God's wisdom and guidance, making sure your choices align with biblical principles and your long-term financial goals. Major decisions like buying a home, investing in a business, or planning for retirement can be overwhelming. However, God's Word provides a blueprint for financial success. Consider Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6, which advises, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your path straight. This verse serves as an excellent reminder to stay grounded in your faith when making weighty financial choices. When you're about to take a significant financial leap, first, pray for wisdom. James 1 verse 5 reminds us, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. It's not just about asking God for money or success, but seeking His wisdom in managing your resources effectively and responsibly. Second, consult with financial experts who share your faith and values. Proverbs 15 verse 22 points out, Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. Aligning yourself with knowledgeable guides can provide valuable insight and advice tailored to your specific situation. Lastly, remember to keep your heart and intentions pure. 1 Timothy 6 verse 10 warns, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. While it's not wrong to aspire for financial success, it's essential to make sure that it doesn't become an idol in your life. Keep God at the center of your financial decisions, and He'll guide your path towards true and lasting prosperity. Trust in His promises, and let His wisdom guide your financial journey. Chapter 20 Cultivating Contentment and Gratitude as you journey towards financial success, fostering a heart of contentment and gratitude is vital, anchoring yourself in the belief that God provides for all your needs. This mindset, rooted in faith and gratitude, is an innovative approach to financial well-being that transcends mere numbers. It begins with acknowledging and appreciating what you already possess. Every day, pause to recognize your blessings, whether they're significant or small. Whether it's the shelter above your head or the meal on your plate, every blessing reflects God's provision. Foster an attitude of gratitude by maintaining a daily journal of these blessings. This habit not only nurtures contentment but also allows you to witness God's presence in your daily life. Paul's words in Philippians 4 verses 12 to 13 are particularly relevant here, I have experienced times of need and times of abundance. In any and every circumstance, 
I've learned the secret of being content. I can handle all things through him who empowers me. This passage underscores that contentment isn't dependent on our financial circumstances but on our reliance on God's strength. Chapter 21 Protecting Your Family's Financial Future In safeguarding your family's financial future, establishing a solid foundation rooted in faith, wise investments, and prudent savings is essential. This isn't about amassing wealth for show, it's about creating a buffer of security and peace of mind. It's about being a good steward of the resources God has given you. Consider the biblical parable of the talents. God expects us to grow what He's entrusted to us, and that includes our finances. By investing wisely and saving diligently, you're not just building a nest egg, you're honoring God's gifts and preparing for whatever the future may hold. Remember, the goal isn't to hoard wealth, but to guarantee that your family's needs are met, even in the face of unexpected circumstances. Insurance is one practical way to protect your family's financial future. Life, health, property, and liability insurance can safeguard against unforeseen losses and provide a safety net when you need it most. Additionally, consider creating a will or trust. This isn't a pleasant topic, but it's necessary. By planning for the inevitable, you're securing that your family won't be burdened with financial decisions during a time of grief. Chapter 22 Leveraging Technology for Financial Empowerment As vital as it is to protect your family's financial future, you should also use technology to manage and increase your fortune. The Bible commands us to manage our resources well, and modern technology offers us a variety of tools to help us do just that. Take into consideration programs that let you monitor your expenses, make a budget, and examine your financial patterns. You may make better financial decisions and see where your money is going by using tools like Personal Capital, INAB, You Need a Budget, and Mint. Investing is another area where technology can be a game changer. Apps like Acorns, Robinhood, and Stash make it easier than ever to start investing, no matter how small your initial capital. They guide you through the process, making it less challenging for beginners. Remember, Proverbs 13 verse 11 says, Wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. Online banking and digital financial services can also help streamline your financial management. You can automate bill payments, set up savings goals, and even invest directly from your bank account. This minimizes the possibility of missing payments and the ensuing fines in addition to saving time. Embrace this digital age and allow technology to aid you in your financial journey. Just as Moses used the tools God gave him to lead the Israelites, use the tools available to you to manage and grow your wealth. Technology, when used wisely, can empower you financially, aligning with God's plan for your prosperity. Chapter 23 Seeking Godly Counsel and Accountability Beyond utilizing technology to manage your finances, you should also consider seeking godly counsel and accountability as another significant step towards financial success. It's not just about learning the technical parts of money management, it's also about matching your financial decisions with God's plan. This involves seeking wisdom from those who are spiritually mature and knowledgeable about biblical principles of stewardship. Look for mentors who can provide godly counsel. These are individuals who've demonstrated financial success in their own lives and who uphold biblical values. They're not just successful entrepreneurs or financial experts, but people who've sought God's guidance in their financial decisions. They can offer valuable insights, wisdom, and practical advice based on their experiences. At the same time, it's essential to establish accountability. Just as Proverbs 27 verse 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Accountability isn't about having someone to police your financial decisions, but rather, it's about having someone to challenge you, encourage you, and keep you on track in your journey towards financial success. The beauty of seeking godly counsel and accountability is that it keeps you grounded. It reminds you that financial success isn't merely about accumulating wealth, but more importantly, 
It's about being a good steward of God's resources. Chapter 24 Maintaining Financial Discipline and Diligence Maintaining financial discipline and dedication is an important part of your path to financial success, which will be distinguished by constant efforts, prudent decision-making, and unwavering faith. Much like the diligent ant in Proverbs 6 verses 6 to 8, you must store up resources in times of plenty, plan ahead, and work diligently towards your financial goals. Embrace frugality. Avoid unnecessary expenses and prioritize needs over wants, similar to the principles taught in Luke 14 verse 28 about counting the cost. This doesn't mean you should live in deprivation, but rather, it encourages you to make informed, conscious decisions about your spending. Regular savings and investments are key. Proverbs 13 verse 11 reminds us that wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but those who gather little by little will increase it. This signifies the importance of steady, incremental savings and investments over time, instead of quick, risky financial schemes. Debt should be avoided when possible. Romans 13 verse 8 advises us to own no one anything, except to love each other. Work to live within your means and pay off any existing debts promptly to strive for financial freedom. Lastly, stay disciplined in tithing and giving. As taught in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7, God loves a cheerful giver. Generosity not only blesses others but also opens up room for blessings in your life. Chapter 25 Experiencing God's Provision and Abundance As you continue your journey towards financial success, grasping and embracing God's provision and abundance is crucial. By applying divine prosperity principles, you'll start to see His plentiful supply in your life. Embracing divine prosperity principles opens a new pathway to experiencing God's abundant provision in your financial life. These principles, deeply entrenched in the Word of God, aren't just about material wealth. They're about holistic prosperity, encompassing peace, health, and spiritual growth. The first principle involves acknowledging God as the source of all wealth, Deuteronomy 8 verse 18. You've got to understand that it's not your job, business, or investment that's your source, but God. He uses these as channels to supply your needs, but He remains the ultimate source. The second principle is about giving. Proverbs 11 verses 24 to 25 teaches that generous giving leads to increase, while withholding more than necessary leads to poverty. It may seem counterintuitive, but in God's economy, the way up is down. The more you give, the more you receive. Lastly, practicing good stewardship is essential. God entrusts wealth to those who manage it wisely, Luke 16 verse 10. You're called to be a good steward, managing God's resources responsibly. Exploring the world of biblical abundance, understanding that encountering God's provision and abundance isn't just about accumulating wealth, but about nurturing a mindset of trust, gratitude, and faithfulness. It's about more than just asking God for more money or possessions. It's about aligning your desires with His and strategically placing yourself in a position to receive His blessings. Consider the story of the widow of Zarephath in 1 Kings 17. Despite her scarcity, she generously shared what little she had with the prophet Elijah, and her jar of flour and jug of oil never ran out. This is an example of God's miraculous provision and abundance. Manifesting biblical abundance involves cultivating a giving spirit, trusting that God will replenish and multiply what you give away. It's about adopting a posture of faithfulness, knowing that God rewards those who diligently seek Him. You see, biblical abundance isn't solely about your bank account. It's about your heart attitude, your mindset, and your life's priorities. As you develop these qualities, you'll find that God's provision and abundance become a natural part of your life. As you faithfully practice these principles, you'll find the truth in God's promise of provision. It's not just theory, it's a faith-backed assurance. Remember, managing your finances is about stewardship, not just wealth. With diligent budgeting, wise spending, and generous giving, you'll witness God increasing your cash flow. Stay disciplined, seek godly counsel, 
and use technology to your advantage. Your financial success isn't just a possibility, it's a divine promise. Thanks for listening.